Hello guys and welcome to the Caribbean Foodie. Today we are with Ian Burrell, the Ram Ambassador. How are you how are you today? All good. I'm very, very good. It's cold, but I'm okay. I'm okay. But you got the rum to keep you warm. Got rum to keep you so. warm. Scarf as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you started out hmm. as an artist. Uh, yeah, how'd you know that? And a, right. <laughs> Who is do your research? <laughs> oh no! And a professional um, basketball player. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. What made you make that switch to be a rum ambassador? That's <clears> so unique as a career. Well, I, I was always, even while I was doing music and uh, um, and um, playing basketball, I was always always in the spirits industry. Um, family's from Jamaica, so I always had rum inside my body. Um, but when I left school, I uh, took a year off and worked inside a cocktail bar, and loved it so much I continued doing that. So while I was working at a bar all my my spare time i'd either be writing songs and performing or playing basketball with a national league team so i was playing professional basketball doing music and bartending at the same time so i never really stopped uh, the bartending and when the other two stopped uh, the music career um, or when i decided to stop the music career and stop with the basketball i continued in the drinks industry and that's how the rum ambassador was born what makes a good rum how can you tell whether it's good quality or poor quality well, I mean, rums, uh, the, the taste of rums is all about personal preference and personal obsession because I may enjoy a particular rum and then you may say, oh no, it tastes disgusting. Right. Or you may drink a rum that tastes uh, <laughs> good in your eyes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, that's terrible. It's about personal, it's about personal preference. I, I, when I taste a rum and I, uh, what I enjoy, I enjoy a rum with really nice balance and flavor. That's exciting to work with if I'm using them in the cocktail. If I'm sipping them neat, I like them full bodied um, or full and medium bodied. Um, well and truly balanced. Um, so yeah, there's different styles of rum. There's a rum for every person out there and there's a rum for different occasions. This is the reason why I don't really have a favorite rum. Yeah. Oh, see, and that was gonna be my next question. Yeah. What, I was gonna say, what is your favorite rum? Uh, or can you name maybe some that you maybe prefer over others that you can think um, of? I, I can tell you what my three favorite rums Okay, are. My, yeah, okay. My three favorite rums are the one in my glass, the next one, and a free one. They're my three favorite <laughs> rums. Because you never know what you're going to be drinking at any time. You could be drinking in Jamaica or Barbados yeah. or St. Lucia. You could be drinking anywhere. So, um, yeah, I, I couldn't say what my favorite rum is. I can tell you what the last rum I'll drink. And okay. That would be Ray and Effie Overproof White Rum. Because as the first rum I ever drank, I'm a Jamaican. 60, right. 63% alcohol, unaged, strong. That's the first and the last rum I'll drink. I keep hearing it's 63%. Yes. Over here, is it not 40 no, no. Ray Nephew in this country is, is the same as in Jamaica. So it's bottled uh, in Jamaica and exported over here. So 63% alcohol. Or if you're American, 126 proof. I must be reading the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> I get drinking the wrong thing. <laughs> What's the highest percentage of rum? So to be, when you're making rum, yes. by law, the highest it can be when it comes off of what we call the still, like yes. these, that you see. Yeah. Um, the highest it can come off is at just under 96% alcohol wow. by volume. Now, you, I would never recommend anyone drinking um, a rum at 96% alcohol by volume because that's going to smash them up. Have you drank it? No, never. Oh, okay. Even like, mixed I, it with I, something. I a little sip of one and come up <laughs> still. And it, yeah. It's uh, hydroscopic. It just like wow. just takes away all the, 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 the moisture yeah. and the, the heat from your from your mouth. But no, the strongest commercial rum I've ever, ever drank is a rum from St. Vincent okay. called Sunset. And it's 84.7% yeah. uh, alcohol by volume. Yeah, that's the strongest commercial rum I've drunk. Um, but yeah, that's really. We strange. can't have that over here, can we? Well, legally, you can't carry on an aeroplane because the most you carry on an aeroplane is 69% alcohol. Oh, wow. But some people do import it <laughs> into the country, and you can find a few bars, a few corner shops that you can buy it in as well. Yeah. Especially down in South London, there's a few corner shops you can buy a, a sunset uh, down there. But, you can um, tell me after, let me go down there <laughs> <laughs> and go buy um, some. But yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's the strongest commercial. The biggest selling overproof rum, when we say overproof, these are rums are over 57% mm. uh, alcohol by volume. The biggest is Ray and Nephew, and yeah. that's 63% alcohol. The Jamaican one with a green and yellow label. Yeah, and I remember one time when I was young mm. and I thought I was grown, and my dad has that. Yeah. And I took a sip, and the whole of my throat just burnt. That'll Never teach again. You. That'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, being the founder of the largest rum festival hmm. in the world, yeah. how did that come about, and how long did it take you to achieve that? So, the, the rum festival was a dream of mine um, back in the early two thousands when I used to see wine events and beer events, yeah. and then other spirit events like whiskey events. Um, and I was wondering why is there no rum event, mm. um, rum festival? And I saw a few rum festivals or a few rum events in the Caribbean. I went over to the Caribbean to see them and they were they weren't really they were poorly run mm. um, and they didn't really show 
diversity of rum. They just yeah. focused on local rums. Mm -hmm. So I said, when I get back to England, I want to create uh, a festival that showed not only the diversity and the different styles of rums out there, I wanted it to be an international show. So all rums of the world would come here to London and show what they do and then use it as a, as a, a backbone to or a, um, a stage to actually then promote their brands throughout the whole of Europe. Yeah. Um, so I took all my savings and then mm. invested and created uh, the Rum Fest back in 2007. Um, a lot of people thought I was crazy. Yeah. Um, a few companies said, yeah, you're mad. <laughs> you come to a Rum Festival. And this year, I celebrate my 13th year. Oh, wow. Um, and it's inspired all the other Rum Festivals that happen around the world. Yeah. The Rum Festival is now right throughout the whole year in places like uh, Australia and Hong Kong and mm. Mauritius. Uh, there's even the one on the cruise liner in, in Sweden. Yeah. Um, then of course you have the ones in America and France and Germany. So uh, and, and a few smaller events here in the UK. So um, so yeah. So the Rum Fest London, UK Rum Fest was the first, uh, and that inspired. So my dream of trying to create festivals or create a festival that um, gets people tasting and sampling rums, and also get the information from the people that make the rums uh, as well, the master blenders, the master sellers, the brand ambassadors has come to fruition. Um, so I'm very happy that it's, it's, it's happened. Um, as I said, 13 years down the yeah. line, we're still doing ours and there's many more rum festivals around there. In fact, this weekend I'm flying to Miami. We're about to launch one in Miami, the Rum oh, Congress, wow. Miami Rum Congress. So yeah. again, we're just spreading. Congratulations. The, oh, cheers, thanks. Uh, we're just spreading the rum gospel globally. Uh, let the people know when they can come to Rum Fest. Mm. So Rum Fest this year, is on the um, the 18th and the, no sorry 18th is a trade day uh, so if you're in the industry in the trade come down on the 18th and then 19th and 20th of October uh, 2019 is the consumer day and that's where you can you get to sample sip and savor and sample maybe 400 rums there's master classes um, from uh, brand ambassadors from master blenders master distillers we have chefs on stage cooking with rums as well showing you how uh, they use the rums and their flavors we have rum cakes we have the tourist boards there st lucia barbados um they give away holidays mm. cocktail master classes um so we're really really creating the rum experience yeah but that's only part of why what i've just launched last year which is london rum week so london rum week runs from the 14th to the 20th of october and throughout london in places like here lucky cane one of yeah. the best rum bars in the world yeah um they're going to be doing small events around london leading up to rum fair so we're really going to take over london yeah. and create rum experiences all over oh, all wow. london between I'm 14th excited. and 20th of october 2019. why have you not got your own rum uh, because I enjoy I enjoy working with other brands. Yeah. I'm, I'm the only one in the world that does what I do. I'm the only global yeah. ambassador for rum. And that basically means I get to work and pick and choose which rum companies I want to work with. Yeah. Um, I only work with rums I drink. I mm. work with brands I believe in, that yeah. integrity um, as such. And I'm very fortunate there's lots of brands out there like that. So, yeah. um, so one day I'll be working in America, the following week I'll be working in Europe. After that I may be working in Asia or yeah. Australia. Uh, and for different brands each time. Um, now, if I had my own brand, it may it may conflict with yes. me working with another one of the brands as such. So, I mean, I will have my own brand in the future, um, but I'm quite enjoying just spreading yeah. the gospel according to Rome about the brands that are existing at the moment. So, uh, yeah, so and the freedom day. of it, I suppose, as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 and the freedom of it. So, one day I'll have my own brand. Can you explain what these are? Right, so what these are, so this is uh, the bar we're in is Lackey Cane. Lackey Cane, uh, um, Lackey Cane in Islington, there we go, established <laughs> in 2018. Um, so this bar is a concept of a good friend of mine named Georgie Aradef. Um, now, what he wanted to do was create a tropical escape um, for people when they come into his bar. And you, you got, he's got like over 300 rums, he has some amazing cocktails, maybe a nice little daiquiri here. <laughs> Rum, lime, and sugar. Um, but also, he wanted he wanted to do what I love to do, which is not only uh, get people to enjoy and understand what rums are, but also teach them about rums, what it's about, how to make it. Yeah. So up here in this room, uh, this is the Spice Dry Rum Club, and what he does here, he, he actually gets people to create and make their own spice rum. Um, so, so you start off in these little things. These are little pot stills. Um, this is the old crude way of making alcohol and it works in the simple process of that um, alcohol and water have different boiling points. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, as we know. Alcohol boils at a little bit less, about 78. So you put some alcohol inside here or some rum, um, and you also put some spices inside here. So you take out, you open up the drawer and you take out your spices out here. There's nothing here at the moment <laughs> because uh, <laughs> they haven't set up yet. But you take out your spices in there. So it might be a bit of nutmeg. It may be a bit of cinnamon. It may be a bit of uh, um, orange peel. Um, it may be some vanilla pods. 
And then what happens with that, that goes inside the steel with the rum. Then you heat it up, turn that little heating on, and you heat it up, it boils. And then once it gets to 78 degrees, the first gas that starts to rise, or the first time the, the liquid that's boiling, is alcohol. And that's the rum, because the water is still inside there because that's not gonna boil until it gets to 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. Once the alcohol starts to rise up here, it hits what we call this swan neck, it looks like a swan made from copper, condenses down into this condenser, because we've got a bit of water inside here to cool it down, condenses down back into a liquid and drips out of here. And what drips out of here is rum or the spice rum. Because mm. what it do, what it is, it takes the flavors and the oils from the spices and the fruit that you put inside there. So you're basically making your own spice rum as such. So that's what happens in this room here. You learn how to you understand rum. You see a video up on there, understand what rum's about, how it's made, and then you get to make your own spice rum. Thank you so much, Ian, for you're the welcome. interview. And congratulations welcome. on everything. Oh, thank you. Cheers. <laughs>